return for a Game Hunting Pet Peeves Part 2? Yes, everybody knows. We all do annoying things. Yes, we all know that sellers do annoying things. There are so many seller no-nos when selling video games at a swap meet or a garage sale or a flea market or a car boot, whatever you call it. And there's buying no-nos. Let's talk about those. Oh boy. Pet Peeves Part 2. Here we go. <sighs> is probably one that we've all experienced hundreds of times. I'd say this is like the number one pet peeve when you're buying video games from a flea market or a swap meet or a garage sale. And that's when a seller refuses to negotiate at all in any way, shape or form. Now, I'm not I'm not talking us trying to rip the person off. If the person says, hey, 20 bucks for this, I'm not saying when we're like, I'll give you two. That's just us being rude, even if it is worth two. I have a, have a little bit of niceness in your tone. But I'm talking when they're like 20 bucks and you're like, oh, you know, I, I actually only have, and, and if you're serious, I actually only have like $19 on me. And if they say no still, it's one of those moments where it's like, really? You won't go down a dollar? Now I get it, we can say it's vice versa as well for the buyer, like you won't just go up a dollar. But remember, they're the ones trying to make money. So it's one of those weird things where it's like, all you need to do is just give me a little wiggle, especially if you're really close to the price. Again, when you're so far off, I get it. They can get offended like, I'm not giving you that for a, a fraction of what I said. I'll give it to you for if you want to come close. That's, that's, what, that's what deals are called. That's what dealing is all about, making an offer, working with each other, swapping, meeting. Is that why it's called a swap meet? That, why is it called a swap meet? You swap stuff and you meet up? I guess. So sellers, if you're watching, it won't hurt to give to give a little love, give a little leeway. I'm not saying big leeway. We don't want you to go out of business here. And if anything, you negotiate a little, those people are gonna come back. Trust me, we've done it a hundred times for people who have given us a good deal and we're like, hey, this guy was awesome. Let's buy from him more. And for sure in the long run, you're gonna make more money than if you wouldn't have. You're gonna make more money than if you didn't give us a good deal and we never came back. I think that's what I was trying to say. I think. You ever been walking around a swap meet and you see something that's big that you want to buy? And I'm talking big, like a big item. And you're like, hmm, I think I want to buy that. You ask the price, it's a good price. It's something you want to buy and you're going to buy it. So this pet peeve is buying giant items that you might possibly have to carry around the swap meet with you. And the reason I say there's kind of a back and forth with this is because you're kind of faced with a dilemma every time you buy a big item at the swap meet. Dilemma number one, you buy it and you have to carry it around with you. That's not fun. I did that with a big old Michelangelo, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I bought this thing. I had to carry it around the entire swap meet with me. Yeah, we were in a really goofy mood that day. We did a $5 challenge, so I didn't mind as much. This would be one of those things where it's like, why? But on a day-to-day -day basis, you're not gonna wanna carry something around giant with you. Now you may be saying, hey, hey Riff, that's why you just leave it at the table and come get it later. You're also faced with another dilemma there because have you ever been to a swap me and you go to pick something up and they're like, oh, I'm holding that for someone and it's kind of just sitting on the side. That's what I'm talking about. My fear is if I say, hey, I'll buy this. Can I leave it here and pick it up later? You're kind of just working off a trust system. This is a swap meet. I am always afraid that if I tell them that, that someone else that's running the booth or just a random person might take it or they might sell it on accident. This is a swap meet. There's no guarantee that when you come back, this thing's gonna still be there. I can't tell you how many times I've been to the swap meet where I go to pick up something and last minute, like as I'm about to walk away, someone's like, oh, but, oh actually, I I need to give you your money back. I was holding that for someone. I'm like, uh, I almost just walked away with some stuff that was already paid for. And my final dilemma with this whole thing is someone would say the obvious answer is to buy the big item, then walk it back to your car. Now, if you're a collector like us, time is valuable. Yes, you wanna enjoy your time at the swap meet, but time is valuable, especially if you're with Ricky and you try to say, hey, let's walk back to my car. Let's go put this back and then come back. He's like, no, 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 no. Do you know what deals we might miss in that time? You can miss deals. So buying big items is always a, there's like a three-way dilemma that you got to choose. What's the way to do? I'd say it's an annoyance. It's, uh, is it still a pet peeve? I'm going to say it's a pet peeve still. Here we go. 
Okay, so thanks for having me, and this was a tough question. There's so many answers, honestly. You've discussed a few of my top ones, but by far for me, it's got to be the stickers that they seem to put on games, on the cartridges, and on the cases themselves, or even cases for statues and things. This one just simply drives me insane. For more modern, kind of disc-based systems, frequently I find the stickers, you know, underneath the sleeve for some reason, on the artwork itself. Why, why would a store do this? What would possess you? Just think, you know what, I'm gonna stick the, the price right on top of the label, probably ruin it, probably tear it when you've got a perfectly good plastic shield right there. And that's just in stores, but at Swap Meets, I've seen everything from, you know, cheap price stickers on figures directly, where they've obviously been hand-painted. I've seen the price stickers on boxes for two to $300 SNES games. It's gonna do some serious damage. It's gonna peel that artwork straight off, depending on how long it's been there. Or my favorite one is always when you get a SNES card or a Genesis card, perfectly big plastic things, and they stick the sticker right on the artwork. I mean, sticking it on the label achieves one of four things. It leaves that horrible residue behind. It's just gonna be there forever. No matter how much you clean the damn thing, you're always gonna feel it every time you put it in your console. Another favorite of mine, it leaves the shape where sun damage has impacted the rest of the label. Because I live in Arizona, people, and sun damage faded labels here are real. Next, it probably will peel off some of the printed ink. And that's always good, you know, just to destroy the artwork that someone works so hard on, which is something I really like to see. Or finally, it just starts peeling the label off itself. And that's it, that's my big one. Stickers, hate stickers. Surely we've invented something better by now to achieve what we need to by telling people the price. But it's the world we live in. We're gonna keep on seeing it, I'm sure. I'm curious to see if anyone else agrees. Let us know in the comments, thanks. This might be my favorite one because I don't get mad at this one and I genuinely laugh in my head. It's when we're looking at something, let's say it's Sonic the Hedgehog on Genesis. And I'm looking at it and I walk up like, I might buy this. You know, I don't need to look at it too long. It's, it's, it's Sonic, I know about it. And the seller jumps in when you're looking at it and goes, that's rare, that's hard to find. Really? Yeah, it's, it's that, that, you don't really see those anymore. And they start making up these facts. And, and they're just throwing them out with, with zero regard. You don't see that game anymore, ever, anywhere. I'll, I'll be honest, I've never snapped back at them. I've never been like, um, hey, you're dumb, you're an idiot, they're everywhere, you can find them anywhere. No, I kind of, I admit I kind of bite into it and play with it. I'm like, wait, this is a rare game? How much is it? And they're like, oh, it's 25. And I'm like, hmm, man, that's tempting. How, like, what year did this come out? And then they're like, 90, 90, 97. And I'm like, oh man, 97, that was the year. That was the year of good video games. And I'm like, yeah, they don't make them like they used to, but you know, you walk away, you're never gonna see this again. I don't buy them, but I admit, I, I play along with them. This next one is poking at us. Yes, us, the buyers, the video game collectors. And that's when we offer something that's far below value. Now I say, remember, listen to that. When we offer far below value, here's the thing. In my opinion, the proper way to game hunt and game collect at a swap me is when you see something that's expensive or you see something that you know is rare, you don't have to jump out and say it's rare if the seller, if the seller already has it priced and they're like, oh, this game is 10 bucks, I'm asking $10. If you know it's worth 90, you don't have to say, oh, but that's the $90 game, I can't take that. You can say, I will take it. That is what they priced. But the jacked up part, and this bothers me when people do it, when they say, you know, I don't know what this game is. Um, throw me an offer. Do you know anything about it? And if you clearly know this game is like $100, there's a fine line of being like, I'll, you need to you need to come within the range is what I'm saying. If you know it's a $100 game and they're asking you, you, uh, yeah, do you know what this is worth? You know, I, I'm not really sure. You, 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 you can't say five bucks. That's, that's just messed up. <laughs> that's that, that's not cool. <laughs> you gotta at least try to come close. You know, you could say, hey, this game is a little bit valuable, you know, but uh, I'll give you 50 bucks or something, you know, that, that's half off, whatever, whatever. But in my opinion, us as buyers and collectors, 
your juju is going to come back to get you if you're doing stuff like that. If, if, if they, like I said, if they have it priced and they say this is 10 bucks, boom, take it. You don't got to say a word. But if they're like, I don't know, you know, you sweet little old lady, sonny boy, I, I don't know how much it's worth. Do you, what would you pay me for this? I'll give you a dollar. That's messed up. I just saw the funniest example of this recently while watching the Game Chasers, and that is when people have things for sale or items for sale, and then they're not for sale. Sometimes you go to a swap meet, I'll go to my example first, you go to a swap meet and there's stuff lying out, it's for sale, and how much is this? And they just stare at it and they're like, you could tell they're thinking in their head, ah, it's not for sale. They changed their mind. I know recently on that episode of the Game Chasers that I was talking about, they went to a guy's house to buy stuff to buy stuff. They come to my house to buy stuff. And then at the end, all right, how much for all this cool stuff we've been looking at? Spent an hour here. We drove out to come here. I changed my mind. I'm, um, I'm, I, I'll, you guys got me excited to collect. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sell them. I get it. I'm all for collecting video games. We're all about this. So I'm happy you're collecting video games, but don't have me come to your booth, to your swap meet, to your flea market, to your garage sale, or drive down to your house, your place of residence, where you're telling me I have stuff for sale and then you change your mind. Why? Why? <gasps> Unagi. Another one that I saw on a recent episode of the Game Chasers. Guy, you, you poor guys, you guys got done dirty in a recent episode because both of those bad things happened to you in one episode. And I'm talking about, and this has happened to me probably 50 times where you go to a swap meet, you go to a flea market and someone says, after you ask, do you have video games? Ooh, not here, but I have some. I'll bring them next week. Sweet, you, you, you're gonna bring them next week, you promise. I don't normally drive out here, I don't normally go to the swap meet, but I'll come back if you promise me you're gonna bring your video game. Yep, I got you. You go back, they're not there. They didn't bring their games. I saw it in the Game Chasers episode, you could see Billy immediately ask, hey, did you bring those games? <laughs> the guy's like, no, I didn't bring the game, no, don't, don't bring them. And Billy's like, I understand if you don't have the games, but just 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 don't tell us you're gonna bring them. I've seen Ricky, I've seen this happen to Ricky multiple times where he's talking to people and he's like, all right, dude, hey, yeah, we gotta go to this booth. This guy I was here last week alone, he told me he told me he's gonna bring games. Nine times out of ten, they don't even remember. Hey, did you bring the games? Huh? Remember last week we talked about like Nintendo and Atari and Sega, it was so cool, and you said you were gonna bring the games. Huh? Oh, remember I'm that guy, I said I'm from Orange County and I do this and that for work and I, and I do a YouTube channel. Huh? You told me if I come back this week, specifically today at this time, you would bring me video games. Huh? That, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. <laughs> I don't like that. Oh boy, sweet, sweet mother of Methuselah. I genuinely, like right now, I feel anxiety and even like a little anger in my heart. I don't, I don't like that. That's not me. That's not my personality. This has gone too far. Now let me know your pet peeves in the comments below. What gets you guys, what gets you like, come on, really? There's so many more. I wanna hear more. There was so many great ones in the last video, but I gotta hear more. I just, I just wanna hear them. These, these so far have been on my pet peeves. Maybe I'll do a video called your pet peeves when game hunting. <laughs> Subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell and hit the like button and see you guys next time, it's funny. <laughs> Bet you can't whistle like that. If you do, upload it on Instagram. <laughs> Bye.